Schmurr's Day, March 8th. Sun is crowded for International Women's Day, even with the looks maxes. Hidden in the crowd is the element, waiting to strike like one of those Nutblast videos. And I'm here too, watching. Two years of Sneed posting have turned me into a nocturnal animal. I must choose my content carefully. It's a big site, can't always make bangers. They don't know where I am. We have the community tabs now, for when I'm finished. When that post hits the page, it's not just a call, it's a warning. To them, they think I'm hiding in the shadows, but I am <laughs> the shadows. I wish I could say I'm making a difference, but I don't know. Content theft, slop, petty drama. Two years later, they're all up. The site is eating itself. Maybe it can't be saved, but I have to try. Push myself. Shell Carter, faster, stronger. These edits all roll together in a rush. Behind the avatar. Yeah, bro, when Sarkis touch you too. <laughs> Sup slats, back with another banger. Batman Arkham Asylum, also known as Peak, is a third-person exploratory collectathon beat em up created by Rocksteady Studios in 2009 as the first of the many great Arkham games. You play as. <laughs> You know you fucking play as. The Dark Knight, the Cape Crusader, the Top V, the Batman. But more importantly, who are you facing? Is it the Moker? Shrub? Mexican? It's these guys. It's just these guys. After a long night of telling the Joker the definition of insanity for the first time in a row, Batman captures the Joker and restates him at Arkham Asylum, Gotham's massive penitentiary slash psych ward. By the choice of this astute and intelligent gentleman, Quincy Sharp. And can you guess what happens? No? Well, well, here's a hint. This is the fifth time in a row, because Joker escapes as he planned for the inmates at Blackgate Prison as well as the entirety of Batman's rogues gallery. Gotham PD can't get onto the island, Arkham is now a fortress run by my subscribers, and worse yet, the Joker is trying to create a higher dose of steroid to defeat Sebum, Mr. Olympia, which leaves it up to you to clean house. Okay, as a side note, how the hell have the supervillains not been put to death yet? Like, I'm aware that it's not up to Batman to kill them, and technically it's because the judge is corrupt, but... How? Most of them that are actually insane are just psychopaths, and psychos still get the electric chair. And it's not like most of the judges and courts haven't been infected by their antics too, so why do they still take the money? Are their lawyers just that good? Who's defending them, Saul? Okay, ran over. Arkham Asylum! It's fairly big, split up between north, east, and west, as well as an underground area. Each area of Arkham has its own secrets to find, goons to give, as well as important buildings you'll be going into to track down the Rhodes Gallery. The place is laid out pretty well as long as you're going on the main path of the story. Backtracking though, mmm, not so great. This is usually because A, Arkham Asylum is pretty linear, so there's usually only one exit per area, and B, Batman is slow. Sure, you can grapple and glide around in the open areas, but unlike the other games in the series, you can't do it at the same time. So most of the time, you're just stuck in this goofy-ass sprint animation, especially when it comes to the underground and indoor sections. It gets less egregious as the game progresses. Over the course of the game, you'll also unlock abilities Batman can use to get around the place. Just know that a lot of the secrets outside the main quest require you to have upgrades much later in the game, like the Backlaw, the Lion Gun, and the Cryptographic Sequencer. Wait a minute. Why would you need to backtrack in a linear game? Shh, 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 shh. I'll tell you soon, baby girl. You know, while you're here, why don't you make daddy happy? Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. You don't want to displease daddy. Don't you get me? Speaking of beating the hell out of criminals, let's talk about the other half of gameplay. And trust me, Slats, there is indeed a lot of game to play. Most of the game revolves around combat. There's a whole bunch of guys in the room, here's some buttons, have fun. Attack is X, counter is Y, B is stun for the red guys, and A is dodge. But for most of the time, you just need to press the first two. And what I'm about to say could insinuate that I think combat isn't cool. It is cool, it's extremely cool, but let's be real, pressing two buttons is lame as shit. And as the Batman, it is your responsibility, nay, your god-given right to always be the coolest person in the room. Chaining attacks without getting hit gives you combos, which increases your level, allowing you to spend it on combat upgrades, more health, as well as some of those abilities I talked about earlier. One of the upgrades is throwing a goo, doing a quick insta-kill, batarangs to be used in combat, use what it's giving you, and when it all comes together with a massive amount of goons, there's nothing more satisfying. But what if I told you I just lied? Stealth encounters. Oh my god. Stealth encounters. This is the best thing in the game, period. Arguably the best stealth combat in any game. 
Oftentimes, the Joker will have an area patrolled by goons with guns. Obviously, bullets hurt and are faster than punches, so how do you go about this? Let's go through a potential combat encounter. Turn on your detective mode to see how many enemies are around, where the entrances, exits, and secret passageways are. Maybe hang one of them from a gargoyle to scare them. Cut them down with a batarang, knocking out the person underneath them. Chuck a sonic batarang at a group of goons and watch them all fall instantly. While they're distracted, crawl through the vents and under the flooring to silently take one out. When the collar starts going off, place an explosive near him so it takes out the goons that find him. When a goon is on top of some breakable flooring, take the back claw and destroy the ground beneath him. Now their heart rates are up. They went from calm to nervous to terrified. Rightfully thinking it's every man for themselves, appear from the darkness and take out the last guard. It's so, so good. I think my personal favorite encounter was the one where bombs were attached to the gargoyles. By the time you get to this, you've already went through this area before in a stealth encounter. However, it's even harder without a crush like the gargoyles to help you scatter out the area. Good stealth gameplay is really, really easy to screw up if the AI was janky too, but it's actually really good. They're actually pretty damn smart. Smart. And it is very easy to completely ruin a run if you're not careful. Whoa, look at that! I lied again! The real best part of the game is the conversation the goons have right before you kick their ass. I ain't going there! You even touch the door and it'll get you! Well, still in here. Yeah, you remember uh, Mickey, right? He was an idiot. Deserved to be eaten. That's not a joke, by the way. The conversations are great. You can tell Rocksteady took a lot of care into presenting this game. I mean, you have to. It's Batman. You're adapting like THE superhero. And I'm saying that as someone whose favorite superhero is Ghost Rider. Whether it be the Tim Burton-esque Batman soundtrack, the gothic environments, the genuine horror they tried putting there. I know for a fact this scared the shit out of a little kid, you cannot tell me otherwise. The ever-changing environment of Arkham, and Joker's big brother looking presence making the place feel more alive. The amount of characters like Oracle and Commissioner Gordon to easter eggs of lesser known characters. The iconic boss fight death screens, and a lot of the voice actors are originally from Batman the Animated Series. Uh, rest in peace Kevin Conroy, by the way. I think this is actually best seen in the intro of the game. It's hard to give it justice, but have you ever been to Universal and you would go on those superhero 3D rides with the moving carts? You know how the wait would be long as hell, but it would still feel really cool because there was all these TV screens showing footage of the characters talking to you? The intro felt like one of those. Literally top two video game intros. It only gets beaten by Doom Eternal because there are no flaws with that game. It's like comparing Mr. Rogers to Jesus. And yeah, now that I'm thinking about the layout of the map, it really does remind me of a theme park. So, great job, Rocksteady, and I'm gonna say it, it really does make you feel like that. Oh, that, there it is, there's the line! I'd like to thank the Academy and IGN for ruining that line. But now, finally, we get to talk about that juicy, delicious bad stew of the game. I'll be going over each boss fight that is wholly unique, as well as talking briefly about some of the repeats you'll be experiencing in chronological order. So, we're gonna talk about Scarecrow first, right? <laughs> no, we're gonna be talking about this little shit first. Me? I'm the Riddler, I'm not racist. After escaping Arkham for shitposting on the Megal, the Riddler decided to challenge Batman to a competition. Find 240 secret trophies and riddles across Arkham and it'll get a special prize or, or something, I don't know. Now, why is this in the boss section? Because backtracking is a bitch. This is where the collect-a-thon part of the game comes in. From Riddler trophies to lore and Amadeus Arkham to certain challenges like the riddles of the chatterbox is destroyed, it's actually quite fun. And the more Riddler secrets you find, you'll also unlock models from the game to view. This is mostly done to the detective mode I mentioned before, letting you scan certain areas for solutions or ways to complete the secret. Now I know I keep nagging like a little pussy that walking takes a while, and while it does hinder it slightly, the reason that the Riddler's secrets are so good is because you can get most of them throughout the main missions. And since you have most of them when you finish, why don't you get the rest? Wink wink, nudge nudge, slop slop. Also the more secrets you collect, the more the the Riddler starts to act like a Redditor. How are you doing this? Very accurate. Okay, now time for. I'll just grab his head now. You, you smash my hot wife. Dr. Crane is back to his usual antics of being in the average psychologist, repeatedly sending you into a battle within your own mind. Scarecrow's boss fights are the most different out of all the villains, since it's less of a one on one and more like a game of cat and mouse. You'll have to get across the side-scrolling environment, ducking the sight of Scarecrow in order to shine the bat signal and get the hell out of there. Very in character to not fight you 1v1. And also really, really cool. Uh, who's next? Oh yeah. At least you can talk! Who are you? 
It doesn't matter who we are. Before the events of Arkham Asylum, Bane actually had all his venom removed, but Joker wanted someone to test his Dianabal on, so sorry about that. Bane is pretty much just a beat em up fight with a large stumbling enemy. He can throw things and charge at you. I think I actually died to him the most on my playthrough since I was stupid and didn't know you had to stun him with a bangerang. A, a bangerang. I said bangerang. Jesus lord. It's so hot in this room, I'm dying. I'm actually dying. While Bane doesn't have repeated bosses, he gets the boss but smaller, now common enemy treatment, with Titan goons slowly getting more common. Still a great introduction to the enemy. Of course, with all these Titan infused enemies, Batman needs to find a cure, which leads you to Get him, Tiger. <laughs> After talking to Poison Ivy, she tells Batman that the cure for the Diana Ball is a plant found exclusively in Killer Croc's lair. So now Batman needs to sneak around the place without alerting our good pal Waylon. Think of it like a combination of the Bane fight and Scarecrow's fight, except there's no enemies and it's actually terrifying. That was way too fucking close. You have to make sure you don't make any noise too loud, or else you'll get charged and you'll need to throw a batarang just before he gets you. Easily the best boss in the game. And I'm now just remembering another thing. Maybe the heat isn't so bad actually. Uh, Harley Quinn and Zaz, of all people, get some boss fights. But they're like mini bosses or just a way to introduce a mechanic. You know, speaking of sex appeal, what would Ivy's up to? Ivy's getting stronger. I need right. Yeah! Holy! Oh, yeah! With the help of the Titan formula, it seems Ivy switched from Gymshark model to a powerlifting eco-terrorist. She'll throw guys to attack you, shoot spores to hurt you, and get you stuck in some vines to trap you until damage fades. Also a very, very fun fight. Now that the rest of Arkham has been taken care of... You have been sentenced to death. Have you any last words? I know Jesus has forgiven me. Is that a joke? <laughs> no. Now that he's done saying slurs in game chat, Joker decides to invite you to an Xbox party for a 1v1 on shipment. Originally, he said he wanted to use the 725, but that's bullshit, and Batman went with only pistols just to show the Joker that he sucks dick. So, any cool mechanics to this fight? Dodge him swinging, fight goons, then pull him down, repeat two more times. Yeah, it's pretty disappointing. For the final boss, especially being at the Joker, it's just not that interesting. I don't want to end this on a low note, though. Though, there's still a bit more to do. Outside of the main game, there's extra challenge modes like trying to do as stealth as fast as possible, survival until you get hit, biggest combos, and plenty more. And this applies to PC for modding, or if you use a PS3 for some reason, there's a mode that allows you to play as the Joker. But yeah, that's pretty much Arkham Asylum. A fantastic experience, very replayable, and also very short. I rate this game an arbitrary score of 54 for the amount of Riddler trophies I have yet to complete. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching. Now time for my goon interview. Hopefully I'll get the part for walking back slowly into a dark corner holding a submachine gun frightfully wondering where the bat is. See ya!